Hi everybody, April Henry back again with my fourth Facebook Live. If you don't want to watch it here, you can also see it on YouTube and you can see it on my website, aprilhenry.com. Um, I my plan is to do this every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for at least the ne this week and next week. Today I'll be talking more about characters, especially secondary characters. Uh, Friday, tomorrow, I'll do an Ask Me Anything and give you a quick tour of my office. So what has been helping me lately is praying a lot, um, checking in with friends, getting outside once a day, doing bodyweight exercises at my house, and writing in the literally five-minute sprints. I will find a scene that I need to write that I haven't written very much about, set the timer on my phone for five minutes, and start writing as fast as I can. Uh, the most words I've been able to write is 215. But if you do that four times, five times, you've got like a thousand words. So um, if you want to, let me know in your comments what's been helping you get through this time. So let's see, today's t-shirt and makeup. Uh, first of all, makeup, I found this bizarre green lipstick that changes color on your lips. I am not a big lipstick person, and I must have bought this at some time, and I found this, and so I'm trying that. And for a t-shirt, I am wearing a Bruce Lee t-shirt. Uh, my next book, The Girl in the White Van, features a girl who is inspired by Bruce Lee and um, is a big kung fu person. So I really recommend watching Bruce Lee on YouTube, uh, or if you can find a place that's streaming free videos, he was amazing to watch. Watch a screen test if you can. And then there is a great biography by a guy named Matthew Pauly called Bruce Lee, A Life. And I would recommend watching, uh, reading that because it's an excellent book. It shows Bruce Lee um, in a totally realistic light. So if you have a question, uh, ask it here and I'll either get to it today or in a later video. So um, today I want to talk more about how to create a character. A lot of what I'm talking about does come from my personal notes, so I'm trying to give credit where credit is due. There might be times that I skip or miss something. So um, one of the things I think about when I'm creating a character is what are their, what's their first initial? If you have uh, characters who are named Jason, Joe, Jerome, and Jackson, readers are lazy and they will not remember that there are different people with um, similar initials. They might just all think of them as the J person. So do I actually keep a running list of all my characters in alphabetical order so I don't use the same initial over and over. Like right now in the new book that I'm starting, the characters are named Andre, Brian, David, Diamond, Edgar, Hero, Jerome, Linus, Knox, Nell, Felix, Min, Penelope, Raven, Sophia, Susan, Travis, and Valeria. And yes, I know Sophia and Susan start with the same initial, but I'm trying to minimize that as much as possible. I also, am. this is a book I'm, that I'm starting, has a large cast. Some of them are gonna die, so they won't be around very long, but I'm trying to find a shorthand word for each character. So right now I have Nell as the mom, Min's the tomboy, Elijah's the problem solver, Raven's the drama, uh, Felix is the sociopath, Andre's the athlete, Sophia's the singer, and Susan is just exhausted. Uh, she's the older teacher in the book. Um, another thing that I do is I think about my characters values and internal conflicts and is there a way that I can put their values in uh, conflict with each other because that makes things interesting and if you can make it impossible to reconcile that makes it even better so um, you could do something like uh, a lot of times in books and tv shows we'll see an addict who is tempted to go back to his addicted ways I mean how many tv shows have you seen where somebody has stopped drinking and then they're tempted to drink again or someone um, is tempted to stray outside of their marriage? Or what if someone discovered that their best friend was embezzling money um, from the soccer team, and, but it's their best friend? Or what if you found out your brother was molesting a neighbor boy? Uh, what if a cop had an opportunity to lie 
And without that lie, the person who was guilty was going to go free. Uh, situations like that are super interesting. I mean, if we think of the four different kinds of conflict there are, it's man versus man, man versus nature, man versus society. This is man against himself. I also think about um, giving my characters a goal, not just the main character. I mean, that's kind of a given that your main character will have a goal, but that even the minor characters in my books have goals. Even if it's something just as simple as, I want to get off work now. I don't want to help this customer. So um, giving them even minor characters a goal and an attitude might seem kind of silly, but it, it brings the book more alive. And it makes it the story much richer. Um, now, of course, I cannot be, I, I can only live my own experiences and use my imagination. So um, every single character I write is limited by what I can do. So what I will do if I have a character um, is I'll think, how would I react in this situation? I'll also read about characters who are like the character that I'm writing about. If I'm writing about what is it like um, to grow up with a black mom and a white dad, I'll try and find some people who have written about what that experience is like for them. And then I will kind of add myself to it. I'll think, well, how would I react in that situation if I was this person? You know, if I was a self-centered person, if I was a no-nonsense cop, if I was um, a politician who would do anything to get reelected. And so I apply that technique to every character. So it's kind of like being a method actor playing all the parts. I wanted to touch briefly on bad guys. I mean, if you think about it, your bad guy is not going around thinking, I'm the bad guy in this situation. They're either thinking that they're the hero or perhaps that they are doing what has to be done, that they do not have any choice. They do not, uh, at least in my opinion, bad guys do not feel like they are being bad. They're feeling like they're doing what they have to do the way all of us do. I also think, Bad guys and good guys are more interesting if you give them some opposite traits that you wouldn't expect. A good guy w with a trait uh, uh, like uh, someone who is battling an addiction or is tempted to cheat or is cheating is more interesting than somebody who's just good all the time. And a bad guy is interesting if he has something that he loves, like he loves his mother, he loves his dog, he loves opera. It just makes them become not so one-dimensional. Um, when I'm thinking about how to write a bad guy, um, I've read articles about sociopaths and books about sociopaths, so I could write about them. Or if you think about serial killers or rapists or people who are molesters, they might act the way that I would if someone gave me a giant box of fudge. It's like, no, I'm not going to touch that. I'm not going to do that anymore. I've gotten better. And that sometimes you break down and you eat the fudge. So um, it's that sort of cycle of repression, craving, and giving into temptation. I also think, especially in any kind of mystery or thriller, all of your characters should have a secret. And then you watch what they do to keep that secret a secret. I mean, if you're writing a mystery, only one person committed the murder but the others have something in their past or present that they're hiding. Uh, it, maybe it could be that's something that other people aren't supposed to know, like they were married before, or it could be um, that they, uh, they're gambling, they're using drugs, they're embezzling, they're on the verge of bankruptcy, um, they're, they're trans, something that they're hiding, and then see what they would do to keep it a secret. Um, they're gonna act suspiciously, lie, cover up, and sometimes their secret is about another person. Say you believe your brother is the killer and you don't want him to get caught, then you're gonna go in and mess, mess things up, even if maybe it turns out later your brother isn't the killer. If you watch a TV crime drama, you will see that they will give every person a secret and then um, you watch what they do when they're trying to uh, trying to keep that a secret. Also, um, if you have a murder, I think you need to have at least three suspects, and two of them are innocent of the murder, but you have to have three viable ones, I think, at a minimum for any uh, murder story. 
And when we think about secondary characters, uh, I want to talk about that for a little bit. I mean, they provide information to the main character. They maybe serve as a contrasting foil to point up their weaknesses or their strengths. Um, they have their own subplots that run throughout the book. And they can reveal things about the main character, uh, especially if the, main, if the book is written in first person. Um, again, for each secondary character, they should have a purpose in the story. They should have a goal. They should offer something unique. Uh, and think about whether you can use them for a twist or a revelation or a mood shift and how can he help or hinder the main character in a unique way. And um, some things to do to make your minor characters stand out more is to give them an interesting ailment like a cold or a broken arm, something that affects how they talk or how they move around. I think about giving them an unusual role, like the black sheep of the family, or a great uncle, or the third wife, or the last of 14 children. I think about giving them maybe an unusual job. There's really cool jobs out there that never get written about. Um, I have, in fact, on aprilhenry.com, under, I think it's fun or possibly writing, I have a list of jobs that people provided me with on Facebook that you could draw from those to look at what, you know, think about making your characters not always do the things that you're familiar with, but something new. Um, when I'm thinking about getting to know any of my characters, especially the main ones, I might think about how would they go through a typical day or a typical weekend. I think about their perception versus reality. If they have to wait in line at a bank, are they going to bring their, look at their phone, bring a book with them, just be mad and cross their arms and tap their feet? Um, I think about what are their fears and desires? So uh, are they afraid of appearing foolish? Are they, I always will steal my own fears. I don't like heights, so I've written a lot of books where people are in a high space. I, if you don't like being in a small confined space, put them someplace place claustrophobic and you can write about it in a way that will feel true to your readers. I also think just some other general tips, being consistent with how my character talks and how they react to events. Um, your characters should be different enough from one another that if two of them are talking, even if you don't have attributions, the reader should be able to follow along and basically know who is talking. Um, I think about varying my cast intellectually, emotionally, physically. Um, I'm always thinking about varying my cast by race uh, so that it's not a bunch of white people all doing something together. Um, uh, if I'm thinking about my good guy, you have to remember that your main character needs to be a change agent. He can't constantly just be reacting to what happens to him, but he has to try and make things happen. Even if his trying fails, he has to try. And um, everyone is going to act in a way that you know, enforces their own self-concept. Uh, we all see ourselves as heroes, so we're going to do things that we feel... Um, uh, under, um, so for some reason I'm thinking, thinking in German, um, underlay uh, our own self-concept. And then I, the last tip would be I always think about how can I throw two contrasting characters together, uh, an old cow hand and a ballerina, a young punk and a ladylike grandmother. It's just fascinating to take people from two different worlds, put them together and see how they act. So that's it for today. Um, this again is on my website, aprilhenry.com. It's on my YouTube channel, uh, which I can't remember what that is. It might be April Henry Books. And it's, um, uh, I will, I guess you can look at this with captions on YouTube. I didn't realize that was a feature that they had added. So for people who um, have, uh, who ha do not, um, who need the captions who are hearing impaired and um, ask me anything. I'll get to it tomorrow or next week. And I'll see you guys tomorrow at 10 a.m. or any place, anytime on YouTube or aprilhenry.com. Bye-bye.